Hey all, uh, thought I'd just put another, as I always say, quick video on, probably won't be quick, but uh, I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on what's going on. Um, you know, the last video I showed you, I built that bench. I've done a little bit of work on the Ranger since then, so I just wanted to update you on some of the things that we've done. Um, there's a couple of uh, things that I mentioned in earlier videos too that I'll cover in this one. Um, while I've got the engine bay up, I'll just show you. So, first one is the difference between my old Ranger and the new one. So, as you can see, everything's jammed through the rubber grommet there, which is the one I always tend to use, and also it's the one that um, ARB, the ARB guys that installed, also used. Um, yeah, battery, obviously the battery set up slightly different. This is a slightly different clip. Um, now you can see there, I bought the car with a light bar on it. Um, as you've seen in the other videos, it's got the, uh, the good old uh, four-wheel drive Supercenter Adventure Kings front lights. Uh, what it looks like the people did but when they traded in the car it looked like they removed their lights their ARB lights but they left the um, wiring in so I'm fairly certain I haven't covered this yet please uh, bear with me if I already have I can't remember I'm sorry so basically what I had was a light little light bar across here just in between the where the uh, king's lights are it was just a light bar pretty much the width of that Anyway, I took the King's lights off the blue Land Cruiser that I had before I bought this. Uh, going to, obviously going to install them on here because I prefer them to the light bar. Um, and the light bar was just like a generic, no-name light bar brand. Uh, so what it looks like they've done is they've taken their expensive ARB lights off. But they'd left me all the ARB wiring. So um, you can see here we've got the... The ARB relays and installs and all the ARB wiring here as I showed you just before goes all the way along it's all fixed in place which is really good anyway when you buy the King's lights uh, in the kit you know they got those they call them Deutsch plugs on the on the King's videos and stuff they're like a waterproof two-prong plug goes in the back of the lights uh, the kit comes with all the kinds of different things that you can attach to your headlights and all that sort of stuff but they also have two Deutsch plugs coated in a bit of rubber. You can see it, see it there. That's the Deutsch plug there. Okay, I'm not going to pop it out because you've got to get it in under there with a screwdriver. This rubber, this is all came from Venture Kings. And then they just add, end in a uh, positive and negative wire. So all I've done, I've just soldered the positive negative wire. And once again, the good old black tape. Black taped them up. Now I did that probably four months ago. And they're still holding up pretty well. So, where are we? You can see there, same again, Deutsch plug. Deutsch plug through the tape, sold it onto the ARB wiring. So I'm using all the ARB wiring, none of the Adventure Kings wiring. I've got that all still uh, in a tub in the garage. So yeah, so they left me a good quality ARB wiring. Well, I would assume good quality, slightly better than Adventure Kings, shall we say. Um, and yeah. Now, what else we got? Okay, the dual battery. Now, on my new old Ranger, the Ranger I bought new that I had to sell because I ran out of money, um, I've got a fairly extensive dual battery video. Uh, now, this one is basically exactly the same. I installed it fairly similar. Um, you're going to see it. Where are you? There's the positive for it there. Okay, a nice big thick cable. Uh, where are we? Okay, yeah, there we go. It's down in there. So yes, of course, a million things connected to the battery, I know. There's the... This is the uh, uh, Kick-Ass Australian Direct battery box, battery, dual battery wiring install kit. Because uh, I bought all the Kick-Ass stuff, as you've seen, there's all, all those videos already. So very similar. Positive. Negatives are all off here, guys. Now, in my uh, initial videos on the Blue Ranger, before I knew better, I actually connected it to the negative post of the battery so since uh, I've spoken to guys etc etc this is whenever you see this kind of stuff on the negative post this box and all that sort of stuff means the car generally will have um, like a smart charge you know um, where you know the alternator can turn off and it doesn't always deliver 14.4 and all that so you must ensure that all your negatives at least go off 
here. You can add a fuse box if you want, run that to a negative or whatever. But I just run it positives all off the battery and then negative all straight to the stud here. With the main earth stud, you can see it runs, you know, obviously straight to the negative post of the battery. Uh, yeah, so we went pretty much exactly the same as you saw in that other video. Went around, down behind the ABS unit. Uh, where are we? Now it's all tucked away. There it is there. Let's see if I can get you in there. Nope, hang on. I'll turn it around. Okay, there's again the Anderson connectors. You see, I've just sort of shoved it in under there just to keep it neat. And then, okay. It runs down there. Now, what I did differently, fella, I've got to get under there. What you doing, girl? What I did differently this time, and I'm going to try and show you, is, no girl, come on, out the way. Excuse me, I've just got to get out of the way. Fella, come on, out the way, good girl. What I did differently this time was last time, I actually went in the chassis inside with uh you know split tubing conduit whatever you want to call it all the way down and then pulled it out now this time i've gone just uh, let's see if we can see here yeah. because i'm a fat guy it's hard for me to get under the car uh where are we okay you can see him there and uh, i'll try and get you try and see if i can see where the video whether you can see it or not better not turn it around Yep, there it is there. You can see it there. I've just run it next to the brake lines. You know, tried to... Oh, there's a good one. You can see there. There's a cable tie. So I've just come basically... Oh, ran it all the way back. Okay. Now, once again, as you saw in the other video, I've come up in here. Now this was a little bit easier obviously because I didn't, on my blue one I ran it out through here and then up and you could see it and it was exposed, which is a bit annoying to me. Now, once again the difference with this one is there's no metal stupid rivets in any of this sort of stuff. So I could take all this off, which made it much easier. So in the end we got it up in through here, so you're basically going, as I said it on the other video as well, you're going sort of up in up and then up through here like that now <coughs> slightly different in the back i don't mind my little go bag and a bit of junk but anyway so there you go you can see where it comes out so once again i pulled off that got it in under there now in between the factory tub lining and the tub itself is gaps as most of us ranger owners know you can get your finger in under here and you can see it look you can stick my finger in there that's a gap so that is where i brought out the uh wiring and i'm not happy with the way it's hanging down there so we'll have to uh sort that out as you can see i brought it along now the first video i had the battery all the way up the back and you can see again i've again put the same sort of chain for the dog in here but still need to put something down here on the ground on the floor of the tub um yeah, so run along there, had the battery up here, which was, you know, probably if I'd have thought about it a bit better, I would have put it somewhere else, which I have done now. Uh, because, obviously these kick ass boxes we've got, you know, USBs and 12 volts and all kinds of stuff hanging on them. So you might as well put it in a position where you could use it. I couldn't really use any of those when they were there. Got a little cheapy, little, uh, metal bar led bar you know just in case i'm looking for something or i need a little bit of light i can just plug it into the outside the tub now this is obviously getting charged all the time we're 12.9 at the moment because it's been sitting overnight but it's been running fine and 12.9 is actually over 100 percent if you like i just use a couple of these straps you get them from super cheap about 12 bucks or something hold it in place that's a uh, my Oh, the Yanks call it EDC, Everyday Carry. Um, get a litre of water, a couple of knives, first aid kit, you know. Pen, pencil, paper, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, so that's basically this end. Now my plan is from here, this was originally living in the uh, toolbox of my camper trailer, which I've since sold. Um, really wasn't using it. I'm looking at probably going to my trailer over there, a bit hard for you to see. Looking at probably setting that up with like a removable rooftop tent arrangement or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's still a work in progress. It's still a money work in progress too, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so I'll put that there. So if I do end up getting something that's going to so say I use that trailer and I'm, you know, she's on the back and I'm running the fridge in here as opposed to in here. I'm just going to use one of these Anderson plugs and just run a cable back down and then onto the tow bar where it was before. Okay. Now we've done a couple of other things. So I'll come back around to the front. And I uh, was thinking later on I was actually going to buy one of those VMSs. But, uh, you know, I haven't heard... Once I started to do a little bit of research, I haven't heard really good reviews. Um, so, uh, yeah, I thought eventually I might want to buy a hammer, something like that. Now, obviously, this is a 2014 XLT. It does come with GPS. I'll show you that inside. But there's a reason I'm, I'm not really using it at the moment. Okay, so we'll pop off the fuse box. Now, what I've done, this has a single USB port inside as opposed to the... Uh, Blue XLT I had, which is the newer model, obviously, well, not the newest now, but uh, it has two USB ports inside. But still, I don't like cables hanging down. I really like the inside of the car look neat. I don't like cables running from, you know, the 12 volt plug in things, and then you've got a cable running up in front of all your air vents and over your radio controls and all that sort of stuff. I'm really not a big fan of that. It annoys me. Um, so I like to be neat. Anyway, okay. So I have. Got an adder fuse. I got this from JCAR. Now it's just sitting in between these two relays here. So what I've done is I've, I should, sorry, I should start. I've added extra USB. I've added two USB ports. Um, so adder fuse. It's been working fine. No problem. You can see it there and there. Okay, it runs down. Negatives connected, obviously here, and then just runs through there through a little bit of conduit, and of course through the overused rubber grommet. Which, yeah, I'm going to have to do something about that. Look at Muddy sealing it up or something. Because water's just probably going to pour straight in. There may not. We'll get a little trickle though. Um, so we're going through there. Yep. So the outer fuse, I picked this one. Um, shit, I can't remember what fuse that is. Uh, I will have a... I'll, once I get inside and I show you inside, I'll pause and have a quick look in the manual. Anyway. Um, yeah, so boom. We've had put the outer fuse in there. Boom, boom. Just the proper, you can see in the bottom there, well not the proper, it's still it's just a fuse, but it's the factory fuse, and then I've added the little 10 amp, I think it is, fuse to that, runs down there, through there. Okay, we'll close this up. And as you can see, I've tried to keep it so there's not cables running over here or anywhere that's going to annoy you, so all my, um, you know, uh, fuses for anything wired to the battery are all sort of tucked away behind the battery, so you can still, everything's still factory, you can still get in there. Oh, I am going to get one of those um, massive, massive problem with these. Well, not massive problem, but it does happen, is this intercooler hose splits. Com very, very common issue. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to eventually get, uh, they're about 150 bucks. one of those uh, Plasma Man uh, hoses. I'll put a link to the uh, eBay, or not to eBay, sorry, I'll put a link to his website in the description. Um... Yeah, you get the Plasma Man hoses, they're a silicon hose, and they pretty much will never bust again. And all you've got to do is undo that clamp, undo that clamp there, pop it straight off, put the new one on, put the clamps on. Fairly straightforward. All right. Just going to close this now. Don't mind the look of the sky. Okay. So we'll go inside. Oh, hang on. No, we won't. We'll go over the passenger side first. This is one of the things I mentioned in the other video, or some of my earlier videos on this car is in here um right i'll just uh probably what do we do yeah i'll just um i'm going to pause this and then i will start it again in a sec okay i just wanted to drop the um glove box down now this is what i was talking about before it doesn't look like it and you can see here this is a bit dodgy i'll have to fix this this is the um, 
wiring for the USB, for the dual USB. Yeah, I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to have to fix that. Anyway, um, see here, with the Blue Ranger, with all that uh, extra electrical stuff like the uh, adaptive cruise and blah, 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 front sensors, this car doesn't have front sensors. This was just a massive thing of cables. It was really hard to get access to the grommet from this side of the car, from the inside of the car. Um, so you can see because this one doesn't have much electrical stuff coming through from the front, it's much easier to get your hand right in, pull things through right up in under in there, you know, really close to the grommet. So that did make it easier. Now, I removed this trim. Okay. And we've just come up through here. Now that dash mat I got with the car, you can see, hang on, you can't see because there you go. Now this is uh, a thing I bought off eBay. I'll show you from the front of the car, it'll be a bit easier for you to see. From outside I should say. Okay, so the dual USB, sing just singles, dual USBs, and they run, you can see the cable there, and they run to a little uh, mini transformer on them. Anyway, I'll just put this back up. Okay. Yeah, they run to a uh, run to a little mini transformer and just end in positive negative. Uh, exposed wiring, pretty thin. Good old uh, <clears throat> anything eBay made in China -y kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So. So yeah, I'm running my, I'm running this EDS thing that I actually bought it for the Land Cruiser, the blue Land Cruiser, but obviously it didn't work. Um, you know what, it's actually not bad. Um, I'm not using it for any kind of trip data or anything like that. I have my main display and it just shows me vehicle speed, RPM, uh, engine temperature. Wait for it to start up. Probably might not, I'm probably not going to see it. Nah. Can't see it. Yeah, so uh, engine temperature, RPM, vehicle speed, and battery voltage. And once again, it's just running down through here. And then I'll pull this out so you can see. Just plug there into that. So, look, my speedo is out by about 5k. So, um, I'm finding it that I'm looking up here for my speed. Now, as you can see, I've got the old Tom Tom out. Now, the reason for that, we'll turn off. So, um, I'll just take my hat off. The reason that I've got the Tom, are we gonna focus here or what? Or is it my glasses? It's my glasses, I've got my glasses on. Uh, is the nav in this works well. Okay, I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't work, it works. The only problem is the map is here. Let's see if I can get her out. Yeah. For those of you that have these cars, if you weren't aware, there's your map. Can I focus or what? Hang on. Come on, what are you doing? Hang on. There we go. I'll take the autofocus lock off. That might work. Okay. See here. FOMOCO. Australia and New Zealand. SD Sat Nav V5. So it is the licensed, proper, authorised SD card for the car. Which would have... So it means that's probably... Hasn't been updated. So that would be a 2014 maps. And you can see she just goes in the little SD slot. Up there. I'll pop her in. There we go. She just clicks in up there. So, to update it, it's 199 bucks. So, you know, that's not something I'm prepared to do, pay 199 When I bought the TomTom Tom ages ago, and it's got lifetime free maps. So, getting to this point, now, you may remember, uh, you may... I can't... No, I don't think I did any videos on it. I set up Talk Pro on an old phone with a uh, wireless, with a Bluetoothy wireless um, OBD2 reader, uh, and it worked well. I used it in the Land Cruiser a lot. Um, so my plan initially was I was going to put the 
phone there and then the GPS there which is hence why I've got the two there you can see them there the two USB thing is don't mind that that's the uh, okay for those of you that have these version ranges this is another problem I'll just put you down there so you can hear it okay that is the blend door motor going like that there's a little actuator on it and the teeth sort of wear over time and it doesn't know what it's doing so it'll keep running and running and running even when the car's off it's about a $40 replacement part I just haven't got around to it yet it's not expensive and it's very easy to replace just pull this bit of trim off and in here you get there's another video I can do when I replace that there you go look at this content 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 all right 20 minutes we'll get onto it so did that installed that it's running now with both of these I've used this little white thing here. I'm not happy with that. That's why I sort of covered it up with the GPS so I can't see the white. You can still see it reflect. You won't be able to see it on camera, but you can still see it reflect a bit in the uh, in the windscreen. Uh, okay. So, that white tape. Basically what it is, is 3M. It's this Velcro stuff. You can see it under there. This one sort of sticks on. And because I have a dash mat, I've just stuck it to the bottom of whatever I want to stick it to. And then it just stays in place, doesn't roll around, doesn't vibrate, doesn't do anything. You get it from Bunnings, and it holds something stupid. It's supposed to hold like 60 kilo or something like that, anyway. And it just comes in a little square package. It's about seven or eight bucks, and you get about four strips or six strips, I think. And so I've just used, done that with both. I've stuck the two USBs to the underside of the adhesive on the thing, so let me focus here, yep, there we go, no, fuck her off, in focus, god, look at this, as you guys know, who watch my videos, I'm very professional, take that off, okay, there we go, okay, and uh, yeah, so, stuck them to the, there we go, that's nice and clear, stuck them to the underside of that 3M super Velcro tape thing, and then obviously Velcroed it to the dash mat, so it's kept it in place. So yeah, uh, that's about it, um, update wise, so I want you, don't want you to keep, you know, watching for too long, bloody boring I am. Okay, so we'll jump out. Um, yeah, can't think of anything else, I've just built a shed, so I might do a video on that, um, and I'm building a set of shells too, so I'll probably do a video on that. But uh, we're coming up to what, four, five months now, I've had the Ranger. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. The two things that I miss is the reverse camera. Well, I don't actually, there you go. Because I've used the EDS from Supercenter, I've got a digital speedometer, which is one of the things that I miss. There you go. Now, obviously, the only problem with EDS is doesn't give you coolant, uh, sorry, uh, transmission temp. Scan gauge 2 and scan gauge pros and all that do that. So this was more of a, I'm just going to put this here and see if I like it, the position of it, am I going to use it? So when I get a bit of cash -a I probably will, um, you know, buy a scan gauge too and get to look at uh, transmission temperature as opposed to RPM or something like that on the main display. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, that's it. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I know I've got a few, uh, couple of extra subscribers since uh, the last video I did, and I appreciate that. Really appreciate your comments. I hope I, you know, try to respond to everybody who comments uh, quickly. You know, as you know, I'm sort of hanging around doing nothing. So... <laughs> Anyway, all right. Thanks all and have a great day.